Okay, so we are back with the progressive movement. Last time we talked, we talked about what the heck the progressive movement was and uh, what we meant by who was coming together, what problems are we looking to change. And the problems that we're looking to go after were the problems created by the Gilded Age, that gap between the rich and the poor, the corruption and the government, the monopolies that had been created. Uh, we want to help the people who really built up the nation during that Gilded Age. Uh, and the people who are going to help are going to be called muck rakers. Uh, now, muck rakers is a term that's going to come from Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, we're going to talk a lot more about Teddy this unit. Um, but Muck rakers, a muck rake, maybe you've heard of it before, is used to clean out animal stalls. It's used to pull back that top layer layer of uh, of bedding and reveal what's underneath and really scoop out all of the yuck in the animal stalls. So the term muck raker is going to be created by Teddy Roosevelt and given to journalists, journalists and writers who are going to use their platform of newspapers, of books, to write about and dramatize the need for reform. The main goal of a muckraker was to uncover and expose any terrible things that were happening, any misconduct in politics and business. Uh, now, like I said, Teddy Roosevelt's going to label these journalists muckrakers because of the tool that's used to clean manure and hay out of animal stalls. Because what these muckrakers do is dig up the ugliest things during the progressive era. They're going to write articles to put these problems into the homes of Americans in the form of magazines and newspapers. The homes that we're trying to make it into are going to be that of the wealthy. The wealthy were not traveling at this time, okay? They don't go to the part of town where the tenement housing is. They don't go to the part of town and look in the factories where the workers are making those products that they buy and use every day. So we have to write about it in order for the people to know about it. You also have people in other parts of the country who didn't know about the conditions of the factories because they didn't live and work in the cities and in the factories. So we have to get the people's attention. And people across the nation, when they see what these muckrakers have come up with, they are absolutely horrified by the conditions that other people are facing. Now, this political cartoon that you see on your slide right now is going to be one that you are going to see again. Uh, but we can see there that Teddy Roosevelt, because of his little glasses and his hat, uh, is, is there holding a muckrake that says investigation on it. And it's being used to pull back and see the meat scandal, which you will know all too well soon. But the phrase underneath it says, a nauseating job, but it must be done. So the job of the muckrakers was not great. What they had to do to get the information that they have and the risk that they were putting themselves at was not that good. But nonetheless, somebody has to do it and society needs to see it. So let's look at some examples. We're going to look at a few different examples, all of which have shown up on the regents at some point or another. First, what develops during this time is what we call the naturalist novel. Now, if you tell someone that they are natural, all natural, uh, it means that they're, they're, they're just basic. They don't have, uh, they're not, women who are called natural uh, have natural beauty, not something that's painted on by makeup or, or done up in any way. It just happens all on its own. So the naturalist novel is going to be an honest portrayal of the human struggles. We're putting a face to the social problems that just exist. 
One of the naturalist novels that comes out of this time is Lincoln Steffen's The Shame of Cities. The Shame of Cities is meant to expose all of the political corruption, the, the uh, political machines that had formed and how that is hurting the cities, not helping it, how the cities are falling apart because people are stealing from the funds to actually fix up the cities instead of making them better. Uh, Ida Tarbell is going to write the history of Standard Oil, uh, and you might guess that this is all about John D. Rockefeller, and it's all about his creation of the monopoly Standard Oil. She writes about the monopoly and the activities of the monopoly to build that horizontally integrated model Remember, buying up all of the same industries, all the oil refinery. She writes about how cutthroat he was and exposes how he got that rich. People knew who Rockefeller was, but they didn't necessarily know how he got to be that way. But after this book, everybody knows. And there's no amount of wealth that he could donate to fix his image after this novel comes out. Frank Norris is going to write another naturalist novel called The Octopus. The Octopus is going to be all about the Southern Pacific Railroad. Now, he depicts the Southern Pacific Railroad as an octopus because they had a hand in everything. They controlled every aspect of the country, and they especially had control over the California farmers. Remember, think back to the political cartoons that we've looked at before, describing these big business leaders, describing these monopolies, having their tentacles holding on to all of these different pieces. Frank Norris takes that to the next level in his naturalist novel, using the octopus image to describe the Southern Pacific Railroad. Another even more famous example of a muckraker, which we are going to look at, or we already have looked at these images before, is Jacob Rees, and he writes How the Other Half Lives. Now, Jacob Rees is going to be especially interesting because he uses photojournalism. Uh, flash photography during this time was was pretty new. It wasn't a, a, a fine-tuned machine, uh, so pictures often had to be held still. Uh, the people had to hold still in their, in their pose in order to get an image that you could actually see. But this new technology of flash photography drew attention to the conditions where many urban immigrants lived. We are literally looking at how the other half of the country lived. He's showing the rich people. These are where these people live. There are people out on the street. There are children who are homeless that are sleeping in the alleyways. There are multiple families living in one-bedroom houses. There are people who uh, don't get to shower, who are very dirty. There are streets who are very dirty. This book was meant to expose in pictures and in words how tenement people lived, tenement dwellers uh, lived. Now, the reason that the pictures are so important is because you can't deny or ignore a picture where when you read sometimes, and I know you guys feel this, when you read a book, sometimes you don't really have an emotional connection to the words that are on the page. You don't really care as much. But when you see a picture of a starving child sleeping on the streets, a baby sleeping on the streets, you get a different feeling, a different emotion comes out. So Jacob Reese's technique of photojournalism to expose the tenements and living conditions of the cities was extremely effective during this time. Now the last muckraker, and you're going to read some of this for homework tonight, I suggest you don't eat before you do this reading, is going to be Upton Sinclair, and he writes The Jungle. The Jungle was meant to paint a picture 
of the immigrant workers in the Chicago stockyards and the unsanitary conditions of the meatpacking industry. Now, when Sinclair initially sets out to write the jungle, he goes undercover to work in the meatpacking industry, and he witnesses how terrible the conditions are for the workers in the meatpacking plants. And when he goes to write The Jungle, he writes it with the intention of, I'm going to help improve the living or the working conditions of these people because the working conditions are so bad. And he writes about how dirty the floors were, how there's old blood on the wall in these meat packing plants, how there's rats how there's uh, dirt, how the people don't wash their hands, how the incredibly dangerous conditions leave human blood in your meat, human uh, body parts in your meat, rats in your meat being processed. And instead of people realizing how hard and dangerous these jobs are and how unsanitary the conditions are, they realize, oh my God, I'm eating meat that might have rat in it. Oh my God, I'm eating meat that used to be moldy but was dipped in chemicals to make it look better. And at this time, there weren't vegetarians, okay? The average American was eating meat and eating a lot of meat. And they didn't really question where that meat was coming from until Upton Sinclair writes The Jungle. And then they start saying, the government needs to step in. The government needs to regulate this huge business, which was the Chicago meatpacking industry. You can see in these pictures, that does not look like where you'd want to get your food from. Okay? And think even further, these people, these immigrant workers, these factory workers, they're living in the tenements that were just shown by Jacob Reese not to have running water. They're not taking showers regularly, okay? And then they're going and they're packaging up the meat, the food that you eat. The government really needs to step in here and the muckrakers are going to demand that. Now, the reason that we talk about the muckrakers is because not only all of the groups that we talked about so far have set up the progressive movement to demand that the government come in and take action, but the muckrakers describe very specific problems in society that were created by the Gilded Age that if they do not get fixed, the United States is going to face a larger problem. We need to put on the outside the same image that we have on the inside. That if we're going to project to the world that we're this strong, awesome nation that's making a lot of money, we need to take care of our people so that they say the same message about the country that they live in. That they have the same pride for the country that they live in. Now the next section that we'll talk about that you'll hear about after we come back from break is going to be the progressive accomplishments. So what did all of these uh, groups, all of these movements actually get the government to do? What actions do we actually take? Now don't forget you're going to do the jungle reading tonight and like I said probably don't eat before you do that one uh, and then answer the questions that follow. If you have any questions for me, let me know.